Good evening there, friends. Bobby here tonight. Hey, friends, tonight I want to show you the latest little handgun that I actually purchased here recently. It is an old black powder H&R 32 revolver, okay? Uh, when I first got this gun, it did not look quite this good. It had a lot of rust on it, and the uh, pin here was actually frozen up inside the uh, cylinder here, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute as to how I got that apart. But um, I've done some research. I didn't really know what year this gun was. Um, and from my understanding that this gun started being manufactured in 1883, uh, I believe up to about 1940, they made these style of revolvers. Um, this one here, I nailed it down to the second version of the revolver. It has the octagon barrel and it was made from 1887 up and I'm sorry 1888 until 1897 is when this version of this H&R pistol was actually manufactured and the third version I do believe had the um, uh, the difference in it that you could tell right off the bat was that the um, down here where the trigger mechanism is located instead of being uh, plated in nickel it was actually uh, blued okay that was the biggest difference from the difference from the version that was made from 1898 until 1905 now up until 1905 all these guns are supposed to shoot black powder uh, bullets which are kind of hard to find I've actually located some online that I'm gonna try to order because actually since I got this gun cleaned up I believe it will fire and I'm gonna order some and actually maybe make a video of shooting this little pistol. But uh, tonight I'm just gonna tell you what I've done so far with it. Uh, when I got it, like I said, it was covered in rust. Um, the pin here would not come out. And right now I'm gonna show you how to remove the pin. You can just push on the little lever here and you can pull the pin right out and pull the cylinder out, okay? And I guess, uh, a lot of times people could do that actually to uh, reload these guns if they wanted to. They could um, pull it out. Plus it makes it a lot easier to clean the gun once you can get it out of there. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to install this back in place now while I'm filming this video. And you can start with putting the pin just in place and you still have to pull the little lever and kind of wiggle it and work it back in place it has a notch as you can see right there that you push it back in and, and then re release the lever and then that keeps it from falling out okay um one thing i did learn about these little guns i think they were used a lot maybe by like gamblers and stuff like that you know because they were small little guns uh, back in the wild wild west they might have if you're in a poker game with someone and they cheated, you might pull out one of these little guns and pop a cap in their butt, you know what I mean? But uh, anyway, um, <laughs> now one thing, it doesn't have like a little cover here. This is where you would load and reload. So if you were carrying this gun around, uh, there's a possibility that one of your bullets there could just fall right out, you know, that don't have a cover or anything made to go over that. Um, I did listen to another fellow's video where he said if you did have this thing loaded don't have one up here close to the chamber because if you did drop this gun and it landed on the hammer it could fire the weapon you know and that would not be too good um, one thing that is still wrong with this gun that i want to try to get fixed and maybe there's somebody out there that'll watch this video that'll be able to help me with it the hammer will not stay, it will not lock all the way back. And if I do dry fire this thing, which I'm not gonna dry fire it, and trying to eliminate from doing that. If you see, I went through the motion there, the trigger does stick. I've had this gun apart, but I don't know if there's another spring that's actually missing or something down in here to where the trigger won't come back. You gotta just manually pull it back. So if there's anybody out there that could tell me what I need to do, to get that function working properly, I would be very appreciative. 
if you could let me know about that. Now friends, what I've done when I cleaned this gun up, uh, like I said, it had a lot of rust on it. I know there's another fella out there who's got a video that I commented on and I'm gonna refer him over to this one because uh, he still hasn't got the pin out of his yet. What I've done is I went ahead and took the hammer out. I took the grips off, took the hammer spring out, uh, removed this screw right here and took the hammer out of the mechanism where I could get a punch lined up straight with this pin. And I soaked it with penetrating oil and I still couldn't get it to free up. I tried tapping on it a little bit, but it wasn't wanting to move. What I ended up having to do is take a propane torch and start applying some heat to the cylinder. I simply just, you know, in a circular motion, applied some heat right here, kind of evenly, flipped the gun over, applied some heat right here, kept spraying it with penetrating oil, because when you apply heat to something, it'll actually help draw that oil down into the area where it's froze up. So I've done that a little bit, and uh, it only took one good time of heating it up. Now, I'm not talking about getting anything cherry red. You don't need to do that. Just a little bit of heat is all you need. You don't want to warp up anything or actually melt anything. But I uh, got that heat in there, and then uh, was able to tap on it a little bit with the pin punch, and it come right out. And then, of course, after that, we... Um, I cleaned it up, you know, sanded it with a little bit of 800 grit paper, and like I said now, you know, it slides in and out after being cleaned and oiled up good, just like brand new. Um, what I've done with this gun, I used a Dremel set to kind of start cleaning up some of the rust and everything on here, and I actually used a uh, 90 degree die grinder with some wore out uh, purple roll lock disc you know, that were, wasn't, wasn't quite so gritty as a brand new one. I just used some more out ones just to go around and knock all the rust off the gun. I didn't want to take no material off the gun. I'm sure that I probably did rub a little bit more of the nickel off of there, but in places this gun was actually missing the nickel anyway. And uh, I didn't want to look at the ugly rust. So I went ahead and just got it looking pretty good, like I would like the gun to look. And then I oiled up everything real good and put it back together. So friends, that's my little H&R, uh, um, and, and also it says right here on the top of it, it does say, hold on this away, I do believe, it says the American Double Action, written right there on the uh, top of the gun. Neat little gun, I can't wait to fire it. I'm gonna get some of these bullets and uh, fire this thing. We'll probably make a video of it. But, you know, this is something that we'll uh, probably just keep around, you know, after we fire it the first time, we probably won't ever fire it again. But it's just kind of a neat little gun to have. I like old stuff. I like stuff from the 1800s. And uh, I think it's just a pretty little neat thing to have around. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Tell a few friends about us. And please watch this video till the end. We are going to post some pictures of what this gun looked like before and after cleaning up. So, uh, friends, thank you again. And once again, if there's anybody out there that can give me any advice on how to get this uh, trigger working correctly, I would be more appreciative if you could uh, do that for me. Thank you, friends. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.